Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today's tutorial is modern casual with a textured wrap tee that has attitude but still manages to be sleek and playful. Speaking of, if you like keeping something playful on your hook, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the best modern crochet tutorials and patterns with even more dropping twice weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show so without further ado. For this project, any category 3 yarn will work, but I used a total of 160 grams of yarn. That's 565 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, tape measure, and a tapestry needle. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us what a self-care day looks like to you. Mine would be sleep, and that's it. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using 5 stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, and trinity stitch. This tutorial is made for a size small. You can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 3 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and we're all going to start by making an odd number chain that starts 1 inch underneath our underarm down to our waist. I need roughly 6.5 inches or 17 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 31. Now that we have our chain, we're all going to get started on our first row, which is a trinity stitch. Start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one is our turning chain, doesn't actually count as a stitch. And the first trinity stitch is going to be done a little bit differently than all the other ones. So getting the first one started, into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're all going to start with one single crochet. So into that chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now we want to make sure that we're using a medium to loose grip for whenever we're doing our trinity stitches. So what we're going to do from here is we need to pull up four loops. Start by inserting our hook into that same chain that our single crochet is in. So insert, pull through to get a total of two loops on our hook. Now we need a third, so insert your hook into that following chain. Insert, pull through for three. Into that following chain, insert, pull through for four. When we have these four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four. And to complete our trinity stitch, chain one. Now that is our first trinity stitch completed. Now getting started on the next one, insert your hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, so that stitch will be occupied, insert, pull through for two loops. Again we need to pull up four, so into that following chain, insert, pull through, following chain, insert, pull through for four. When we have these four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one. Now it's going to be this trinity stitch making our way all the way down until we have two chains left, so let's repeat this one once more. Into the last chain that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, insert, and pull through. We need to pull up four, so into that following chain, insert, pull through, and into that following chain, insert, and pull through for four. Yarn over, pull through four, chain one to complete. Continue on with this trinity stitch till we all have two chains left. So we've made our way down with our row one, leaving the last two chains. Now for this portion, at the end of every odd number row, we are going to do an increase. So how we're going to do our trinity stitch increase is we're going to start the last trinity stitch the same way that we've been doing this entire time. So start by inserting our hook into that same last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through. Into that following stitch, which is our second to last chain, pull through for three loops on our hook, then into that following chain, which should be our last one, pull through for four. Yarn over and pull through all four loops. Then all we're going to do from here, instead of closing it off with a chain into that same last chain, we're going to single, half double, and double crochet. 
So we pulled through all four into that same last chain, insert with a single, same last chain with a half double, same last chain with a double crochet, and that is how we are going to increase. Now we should have two more stitches than chains that we made. We're only going to be increasing into every odd number row, so for our even number row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and we're just going to do the first two trinity stitches together. So into that first stitch, remember the first one is always going to start off with a single crochet, unless stated otherwise. Into that last stitch from our previous row, insert with a single. We need to pull up four loops, so into that same stitch that our single crochet is in, pull through. Next stitch, pull through. Next stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all four, chain one to complete our first trinity stitch. To do the next one, insert your hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitches worked into, pull through. Next stitch, pull through. Following stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through four, chain one to complete. We're all going to continue to do this trinity stitch till we have two stitches left. We are now at the end of our row two. We should have all left the last two stitches. Now, like I said, we aren't going to do any increases or decreases into any of our even number rows for this section, so we're going to close it off. Now, to do the last trinity stitch that is not an increase, what we're going to do is start it off the same way as all of our other ones. So start by inserting your hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through, into that next stitch, which is our second to last stitch, pull through, into that next stitch, which should be our last, pull through for four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all four, then to close off our last trinity stitch, just put one single crochet into that last stitch, and that's it. From here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So just do the increase together once more. To get started on a row three, just chain one, flip our work. Do our trinity stitches all the way down, leaving the last two stitches. So we're at the end of our row three, we should all have two stitches left. Now we're going to do our increase together once more. So getting started on our following trinity stitch, insert your hook into that last stitch our previous stitch has worked into, pull through, next stitch, which is the second to last, pull through, next stitch, which is our last, pull through for four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through four, and since we're at the end of our odd number row, we're going to close it off with an increase. Now to close it off with an increase, just like the last one, insert with one single crochet into that same last stitch with a half double crochet, same last stitch with a double crochet. Now since this is our increase row, we should have two more stitches than our previous row, and our following row will not have any increases or decreases. So chain one, Flip our work, do our trinity stitch all the way back down, and since it's an even number row, the last trinity stitch is going to end with a single crochet. Now what we're going to do from here is just continue to repeat our two previous rows until we now have a portion that can reach from mid underarm over to the front of our body, roughly where a bra strap or a tank top strap would lay, and I'll meet you back right after an odd number row. We are back. My underarm portion is complete. I have a total of seven rows. My width is roughly two inches or five centimeters, and this height that I have is roughly seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. Now from here, since we all should have ended along the top, what we're going to do is make an even number chain that reaches the tip of our shoulder. So two really quick tips. The tail end that we have should still sit roughly one inch underneath our underarm because we don't want the armhole to become too big or too tight. And also the chain that we're about to make, we wanna make sure that it just aligns with the tip of our shoulder and not the top of our shoulder because this is an off the shoulder top. So I went ahead and already measured mine out. I needed roughly two inches or five centimeters, so I went ahead and made a chain 10. Now for the next few rows, we're just gonna be doing Trinity stitch rows with no increases and no decreases, so let's get the following one started. So now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a single crochet, and since we're here, you might as well just get started on the first trinity stitch, that single crochet is into place, insert your hook into that same chain that our single crochet is in, pull through, next stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through four, chain one, and just continue to do our regular trinity stitch all the way down. And like I said, we're not increasing or decreasing, so the last trinity stitch will be closed off with just a single crochet. So we are back. We have just completed our first chest row. Now what we're going to do from here is continue to repeat this row. So just trinity stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we now have a portion that can reach from mid underarm 
over to roughly about mid collarbone. Then I will meet you guys back right after an even number row or along the bottom, then we can get started on the decreased portion of our chest from there. We are back in the first half of my chest detail is completed. I have a total of 12 rows. My width is roughly three inches or eight centimeters. Now we're gonna get started on the decrease. So since we all should have ended along the bottom, chain one, flip our work. We're gonna do our trinity stitch all the way up, leaving our last four stitches, and then I'll meet you back to do our decrease. So we've made our way all the way down, leaving the last four stitches. Now we're gonna do our decrease together. Now the decrease is going to start off the same way that all of our trinity stitches have started off so far. Inserting our hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitches worked into, pull through. Next stitch, pull through. Next stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all four, and we should all have two stitches left. Now we're going to do our decrease. So we aren't going to chain or single, we're just going to go yarn over into that second to last stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, and that is how we decrease. Now we're only going to be decreasing at the end of every odd number row, so chain one, flip our work, make your way all the way down with our trinity stitch, no increases and no decreases into any of our even number rows. Now to get started on the following row, chain one, flip our work, work our way back up, leaving the last four stitches, and I'll meet you back to decrease together once more. So we've made our way down with our non-increase slash decrease row and also made our way back up, leaving the last four stitches. Now from here, we're going to do another decrease together. It will be done the same way as our previous decrease row. So getting that started, inserting your hook into the last stitch our previous trinity stitches worked into, pull through. Next stitch, pull through. Next stitch, pull through. Yarn over, pull through all four. That should leave us with two stitches. Then just a decrease of two half doubles into the last two. So yarn over into the second to last, pull through, into that next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four. Now for every decrease row, we should have two less stitches than our previous row. From here, all we're gonna do is continue to repeat our two previous rows until the edge of this decrease half makes its way all the way down until we're two inches underneath our underarm. So the top of this should be a little bit shorter then where this tail end is because we want to make sure that we're leaving enough space for the top band that we're going to have as well. Then I will meet you guys back right after an odd number row or along the top, then we can finish up the rest of our front panel together from there. I am back and the decrease portion of my front panel is complete. I have a total of 35 rows that's roughly nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters. All we're going to do from here is continue on with our trinity stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have a portion that can now reach over to mid underarm on the other side. Now I'll meet you guys back right after we have that portion completed right after an odd number row. Then I'll meet you guys back. I've just completed the entirety of one of my front panels. I have a total of 53 rows. My width is roughly 14 inches or 35 centimeters. Now before we get started on the other front panel, we're going to insert our stitch marker into the middle row. We should all have just one since we made an odd number of rows. Mine is the 27th, so I inserted my stitch marker into there. Now make a second panel that is exactly the same, including the stitch marker, and I'll meet you back. So we are back and we have just completed our second front panel. Now what we're gonna do from here is get started on our back panel. Now that's gonna be fairly simple. What we're all going to do is start by making the same underarm that we did for the front panel, and also make that same chain. Then from here, we're going to be doing our trinity stitch rows with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for the entirety of our front panel, minus the amount of rows that we have for our underarm. So as an example, for the entirety of one of my front panels, I have a total of 53 rows. Now I had a total of seven underarm rows, so I'm gonna take my 53, subtract seven, and that's gonna give me 46. So I will be having a total of 46 rows, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the underarm portion. And we're only doing it that way because we want the front and the back panel to be the same width. And don't mind the single crochet row that's on top, we'll all add that in together later. We are back. The first bit of my back panel is completed. Now what we're going to do from here is our underarm portion. So to get that started, we're all gonna start by inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of stitches as chains that we made. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain 10 over here, same as the front panel. So I inserted my stitch marker into the 10th stitch from the top. Then what we're going to do from here is our trinity stitches all the way up, leaving the last four stitches. We've made our way all the way up with our first underarm row, leaving the last one, 
two, three, four stitches right before our stitch marker. Now we're going to do our decrease. So to get that one started, we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the last stitch our previous Trinity stitch has worked into. Pull through, next stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through four, then simply decrease into the last two stitches. So yarn over into that second to last, pull through into that last, pull through, yarn over, pull through four. Now from here, our following row will not have any increases or decreases, so just chain one, flip our work, and make your way all the way down. Then all we're gonna do from here is continue to repeat our two previous rows for the same amount of underarm rows that we have for the other underarm portions. When we do, do a chain up one and cut, and I'll meet you back. We are back, and our back panel is complete. Now we're going to seam all of our panels together. So placing our panels on top of each other, we're going to place our back panel down first, then our left front panel, making sure that the underarms are aligned, then the right front panel on top of that, making sure that underarm is aligned as well. Then what we're going to do is insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of all three of our panels, then we're going to do a seam. So now that our hook is into the bottom corner stitch of all of our panels, we're going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Then we're going to single crochet in through all of them. So into that next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the other front panel, next stitch into the back panel, and single crochet everything together. Again, next stitch into the front, next stitch into the other front, next stitch into the back, and single crochet, and continue doing this, making our way all the way up so we don't have any more stitches left. Now, one of our panels will be a little bit shorter than the other ones, so once when that runs out, just continue to pinch the two taller panels together and just continue on with our single crochet seam. Then repeat on the other side. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up seaming our sides. Now we're gonna get started on our sleeve. So first things first, we're all gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning the seam that we just did is now along the inside. Then what we're going to do from here is insert our hook into the top corner stitch of one of our panels, then we're going to work down into our armhole. So first things first, insert your yarn onto your hook and put one single crochet into every stitch. Then I'll meet you back when we reach our first side row. So we've made our way down and we reached our first side row. Now all we're gonna do from here is just alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. So starting with our first side row right here, I'm gonna find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. This is my following side row. I'm gonna find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. Let's do that again. This is my following side row. Find that top loop and insert with one. This is my following side row. Insert into that top loop with two. There's one. There's two. We're going to continue doing this until we reach our side seam. Once we do, I will meet you guys back because the amount of stitches that we need to have on this side of our side seam must be in multiples of three. Now that we've made our way all the way down to our side seam, like I said, the total amount of stitches that we just did must be in multiples of three. So if it's not in multiples of three, go ahead and add an additional stitch or two into that same side row to make sure that it is. So I just need to add one more single crochet into that same side row. Then right over that side seam, I'm gonna chain one and insert my stitch marker into that chain one. Then from here, we're going to repeat this on the other side. So again, alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. If you guys needed to add a stitch or two on this side, do the same thing on this side, then one single crochet into every stitch. When you reach this top corner stitch, do a chain up, pull one and cut, and we should have the same amount of stitches on both sides of our stitch marker. So we are back. Our single crochet row is complete, and we did cut after that last stitch. Now what we're going to do from here is the length of our sleeve. So making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, we're all going to insert our hook into our stitch marker stitch. Then we're all going to make an odd number chain the length that we'd like for our sleeve to be. So you can make this as long or as short as you'd like. I'd like for mine to be a short sleeve, roughly just about an inch or two centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain five. So now that we have our chain, we're going to do our trinity stitch all the way up. So just to do the first one together, block off that last chain and chain one. Doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Into that chain that we blocked off with a second chain from our hook, insert with a single crochet, and do our first trinity stitch per usual. Then continue to do our trinity stitch, making our way all the way down until we all have two chains left. So we've made our way down with our row one. We should all have two chains left. Now from here, we're going to do our last trinity stitch with an increase, which is gonna be the same way that we've been doing our increase so far. So insert your hook into the last stitch our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through. Next chain, which should be our second to last, pull through, and next chain, which should be our last, pull through. 
yarn over, pull through all four, then into that same last chain, one single, one half double, and one double crochet. Now we should all have two more stitches than chains that we made. Now we need to connect it into the base. So what we're all gonna do is start by counting up the next two available stitches into the base. So here's one, and here's two. Into that second stitch into the base, we're all going to insert with a slip stitch. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and our even number rows aren't going to have any increases or decreases, so just do our trinity stitch all the way down. Then at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, do our trinity stitch all the way back up, into the last two stitches, do the same trinity stitch increase that we've been doing this entire time, and then I'll meet you back to show you how we're going to connect it into the base just once more. We are back. We are nearly finished with our first one, two, three rows. Now we're just going to connect the end of the third row into the base. So just to make sure, we did end our third row with the same increase that we did for row one. Now to connect it into the base, we're going to count up the next two available stitches again. So there's one, there's two. Into that second stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch, still doesn't count as a stitch. Then work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, still doesn't count as a stitch, flip our work, and trim any stitches all the way down. That's it. For this portion, we're going to continue to repeat these two previous rows, making our way all the way up, and I'll meet you back once we're worked into our last stitch. We are back and we've just made our way all the way up and we are worked into our last stitch into that single crochet row that we just completed. Now from here we're just going to do more trinity stitch rows that's worked off of the body that can wrap around our arm. So all we're going to do, no matter if we end it along the top or the bottom, we're going to chain one, flip our work, trinity stitch all the way down with no increases and no decreases. Then we're just going to continue to repeat that row until we have a portion that can reach around our arm from this corner point that it's attached to around to the top corner point of our other panel. Now I'll meet you guys back right after an odd number row or the side that's closest to the base so we can connect it together from there. I am back and the width of my sleeve is completed. Now I have a total of 31 rows. This width that's worked off the body is roughly four and a half inches or 11 centimeters. Now we're going to look at the other panel so we can connect it. So what we're all going to do from here is just slip stitch into the top corner stitch of our other panel. Now that slip stitch still doesn't count as a stitch. That's basically just our way to work our way up to the following row. From here, flip our work and do our trinity stitch all the way down. Then we're going to get started on the following row, which is going to be our trinity stitch that ends with a decrease. So at the end of that following row, chain one, flip our work, trinity stitch all the way down, leaving the last four stitches so we can decrease together once more. So we are back. We've made our way all the way back down, leaving the last four stitches. Now we're going to do our decrease together. It is going to be done the same way as our other decreases. So as a refresher, we're going to insert our hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitches worked into, pull through, next stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through four. That should leave us with the last two stitches in the row. So just do a decrease of two half double crochets into those following two stitches. Then from here, slip stitch it into the base the same way that we did for the other side. So as a refresher, count up the next two available stitches. There's one, there's two, slip stitch into that second stitch to connect. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and working our way out towards the outer edge. We don't have any increases or decreases, so just make your way all the way down. From here, continue to repeat those two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam it together. We are back and we have just completed the entirety of our sleeve. The decrease side made its way all the way down. Now what we're going to do from here is seam it together, but since it's going to be the same seam as the sides, I'm just going to talk you guys through it. So making sure that our work is slipped wrong side out, we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch and do the same single crochet seam that we did for the sides. Once we have that completed, do a chain up a one cut and repeat everything we did here on the other side. Now once we have both of our sleeves completed, the next thing we're going to do is our top band. So start by making sure that your work is slipped right side out, right side up. Making sure that we're looking at the front panel, we're all going to insert our hook into the left front panel's bottom stitch. We want to make sure that we're starting within the bottom corner of the left front panel because we want to show the front of the single crochet row. So I'm going to just pull this down a little bit and find that last side row. And this is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook and single crochet my way all the way up and around. So this single crochet row is going to be fairly simple. 
We're all going to alternate between one to two single crochets, making our way all the way up. It is going to work across the top of our sleeve, across the back, and then down the other sleeve, and then down the other front panel. Once we have that, I will meet you guys back so we can get started on the height of the top band, but we do want to make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into that same side row that our stitch markers are in so that we know where the middles are for the front panels. So we are back. Our single crochet row is complete. Now what we're going to do from here is get started on the height of our top band. So what we're all going to do is start by making a chain for the amount of space that we have from where we ended to the bottom of our sleeve. So I went ahead and already made my chain. I needed just about an inch or two centimeters. So I went ahead and made a chain six and now we're going to get started on the following row. So once we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain and into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over and gently pull through both loops on our hook. We want to make sure that we're not tugging too tightly. Otherwise the flying row will be too tight to work into. Again, into that following chain, insert, yarn over and gently pull through everything and continue with one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to connect it into the base, which is that single crochet row. So I'm just going to flip my work over. So find that next available stitch into the base and insert with a slip stitch. Now that stitch doesn't actually count as a stitch, that's just to connect. Then we're going to need to work our way up to the following row as well, so slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Still doesn't count as a stitch. Flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So just finding the last stitch from our previous row, not into those slip stitches into the base, Find that first stitch's back loop or the loop that's furthest away from you. Then yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Again, into that next stitch's back loop. Yarn over, pull through everything on our hook and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again and I'll meet you back to connect it into our base right after the end of our row three. We are back and I'm at the end of my row three. Now we're gonna connect it into the base again. So it will be done the same way as our previous row, so just find that next available stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch to connect, then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, flip our work, and repeat. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases, making our way all the way up and around. Then I will meet y'all back once we're worked into our second front panel's stitch marker stitch, and then I'll meet you back so we can seam it all together. And we do want to make sure that we're keeping our stitch markers into place. All right, so we are back. We have just completed our back loop slip stitch rows, making our way all the way around. Now we're going to connect the top band. So how we're gonna do that is with a tapestry needle that is the easiest and cleanest way to do this. And all we're going to do is just flip the first half of our top band over, and that's going to reveal our stitch marker that we have in the middle of our front panel. All we're going to do, I'm gonna take out my hook because we don't need it for this portion, is just make sure that the base of that last row is aligned with the top front panel's stitch marker, so something like that. Then we're going to pull the edge of this last row to match the edge of the single crochet row along the top of the front panel. So all we're gonna do is just align it something like that, and then we're gonna take our tapestry needle and just sew it in. Now you guys can use any technique that you want. It is completely up to you. I would just make sure that we're working into the single crochet row because that does count as the base so that it doesn't tug on the actual band once when it's connected. All right, we are back. We have just completed seaming the bottom of our top band to the top of our top band, so everything should be connected at this point. Now we're going to do pretty much the same thing on this side. So just taking our tapestry needle and aligning our first top band row with our side seam, so it is gonna stretch all the way over to the seam. You're just going to weave it in using your tapestry needle as well. Once we have that completed, I'll meet you back so we can finish up with our bottom band. All right, so our top band is now completely connected. Now we're going to finish up with our bottom band. So making sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, we are going to insert our hook into any one of the side rows along the bottom. And since I'm inserting my hook towards the front panel, I'm gonna be inserting it into the same side row within the top front panel and the bottom front panel as well because we're going to want to seam this all together. So this part is gonna be fairly simple. We're gonna be putting just one single crochet into every side row. So just to do the first few, we're gonna pull our working yarn through and do a chain up of one. Now finding our first side row within the front panel, insert, first side row within the bottom front panel, insert, and single crochet. Again, 
next side row within the top front panel, and also next side row within the back front panel and single. Just continue doing this, making our way all the way around. And once we reach this seam, we'll be ready to work into the back panel. And working into the back is just one single crochet into every side row. We aren't sandwiching anything for the back. Make your way all the way around and slip stitch into that chain space. Now really quickly, the single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So once when it's completed, try your piece on. If it's a little bit too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip. Or if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. We are back and our single crochet row is complete. Now what we're going to do from here is make the bottom band. So from here we're going to make a chain the length that we'd like for the bottom band to be. I'd like for mine to be roughly 3 inches or 8 centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain 15. Then we're going to do the same back loop slip stitch rows that we did for the top band. We're going to continue on with that with no increases and no decreases making our way all the way around. We don't have any more stitches left to work into. I'll meet you guys back. So we are back. We have just completed making our way all the way around with our bottom band. Now we're going to finish it up by seaming it together. Now this seam is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So making sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then yarn over and pull through everything. So to do the first one, finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert only into that front loop. Then finding that first stitch into the back panel, we're going to insert into that back loop, then yarn over and just pull through everything on our hook and that's it. Continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then I'll meet you back. Our seam is complete for the bottom band and we are all done. Now the last thing we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye!